just about every every service is talking about being like Christ. You know, when we stand still and know that I am God, we're going to start being like Christ. You know, um, so on that, I just want to take a few minutes out and Moses, can I get a cup drop, please? <laughs> I have her bring it. Thank you. On that note, the, the choir special, I didn't, I didn't plan it that way, but the choir special goes right along with the message. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Because once we trust in Christ and we learn uh, things about him, we can't help but emulate or to copycat him in everything that we do and say. How many of y'all like copying someone? It depends who it is. <clears throat> it depends on what it is. I don't know how she's doing it, but Yana's going something like this. I see we all can copy Yana because she's just someone we can copy. How, how many of you all like copying, especially kids? You know, Jordan likes copying when he hears a joke. If it's funny to him, he's going to tell you the joke exactly the same way that he heard it. But not exactly. It's because he starts giggling in the middle of it and trying to get to the punchline. But, he, you know, we all do it. Well, what about copying the best person to be able to ever to copy or emulate? It's Christ. We're going to be looking at the first 16 verses. Point number one, how to walk worthy. How to walk worthy. It's right in there. I mean, as, as I was studying this this morning, it just, it was like, never it never dawned on me until this morning on this. It says, Therefore I, excuse me, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation where ye are called, with all lowliness, meekness, and long, with long suffering, forbearing one another, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of peace. <coughs> There's several things in that just that one verse. The, 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 the first three verses. So point number one, how to walk worthy. How to walk worthy. What am I talking about walking? We all know how to walk. We put one foot in front of the other, well, most of us. We, we can put one foot in front of the other and go wherever we gotta go. Some of us might have a little bit more hard of a time to put one foot in front of the other, especially if you're in pain, climbing up the stairs like Tony and I had to do, Rick had to do, it's, it's pain. I understand. But we all know how to walk that way. You know, I had this one guy that, that we knew. He says, he told his, his daughter to walk like me. What he was talking about was spiritual. And, you know, and he has a limp and, she, and he's walking. And she starts walking the same way he does. He, he turns around. She's following his, his example. He says, no, I'm talking spiritually. And she says, well, you should have told me that. You know, it's how we walk. How do we walk worthy? How do, how do we how do we do this? Lowliness. That's not lonely. It's lowly. With a humble spirit. With with not saying, look what I have done. Not being a Pharisee. I mean, think about that. Did the Pharisees have a humble spirit? <laughs> no. Sadducees either. 
Look what I'm doing for you. I give money to the poor. I tithe twice a week. I I do this. I memorize scripture. I I I I. I, I. And then you have a lonely tax collector who's beating on his chest and saying, forgive me, I'm saying. See, we don't want to be like this other the person that's high-minded, proud of what he, proud that he's, I am, look at me, look who I am. With a flat tree on their forehead that's about three inches thick, around the wrist or wherever they have it, of all the scripture they've memorized. You know, that's all for show. Lowliness is, is the opposite. Doing things behind the scenes, doing things to allow other people to get the glory, especially God. Meekness, goes right along with this. <coughs> Meekness is proud. No, the opposite of being proud. We're not saying to be weak. We're saying, you know, a lot of people take meekness as, oh, God wants me, if someone um, is picking on me or someone's doing something, I can't say nothing. No, that's not what it's saying. We, we have too many people, too many Christians that are taking this meekness and saying, oh, I'm not going to say anything at all. As we were talking this morning, some of y'all heard it. As we were talking this morning, be after this, where I said what she said, I won't go into what she said again. But um, I said, someone needs to stand up and take what Trump has already started and go running with it more. Some Christian needs to stand up and say, we're not doing this no more. But most of the time, us Christians, we take the meekness to be weakness and then think that God wants us to be a doormat that everybody can just walk over. No, 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 no. Paul was very meek. And Paul was one of the most boldest people that we see in the Bible. But see, meek does not mean that we have to shut up. Meek does not mean that we can just let people walk all over us. No. It's the totally opposite. Meek is the person that stands up for what is right. Meek is the person that says, hey, we're not doing that, or you're not going to do that to me. Meek is the person that can sit there and say, the Bible says this. See, that's what the meek person does. The meek is, is, is not a person that's going to allow someone to come in and, and to take something from your house. No. Let's go on. Then it says, with long supper. To walk worthy, we have to suffer long. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. You know, we all know families that are going through some things. We do know it to me. Some people might not know it. Some have another death in their family. You know, the cousin died. You're going to do some things. Suffering some things. Now, does suffering mean that you're always going through a trial and, and, and it's God's just throwing all this? No. No, I'm not. Losing a loved one. You suffer through, through that. Your heart aches. You know, I, I, I saw on Facebook today that said that you never get over losing a loved one. 
who just learned how to cope. That is so true. That is so true. And watching your children grow up and, and making their mistakes and, and not listening to what you have to say. And you know that they're going to fall. You know that the path that they're on, they're going to fall. That's up. Because there's nothing you can do about it. Especially when they're adults. Especially when you see someone that you love making that mistake and you're like, hey, 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 don't. You're good. And your heart aches for them. They have to learn the hard way sometimes. But you suffer because you see what they're doing. You, your heart breaks for the things that's going on. I mean, let's take our own country. In December, we had gas prices. Let's just use gas prices. In December, we had gas prices here in Alabama under $2. I, actually, I think the last time I got gas was $1.39. I just got gas a couple days ago, and it was two sixty nine. dollars Over a dollar in three months. Hmm. We're suffering some more money coming out of our wallets. But see, we have to suffer something to look at Christ in a better light. You know, I know I've told this story to Jacob's not here, but when Jacob was here, Jacob was probably Rainy's age, maybe a little bit younger. Chuck, I put him on the edge of the pool. And I said, Jacob, do you trust me? Yes, Daddy, I trust you. If you jump, will Daddy catch you? Yes, Daddy will catch you. Jump? No. <laughs> Will Daddy catch you? Yes, Daddy will catch me. Do you trust me? Yes, Daddy, I trust you. Then jump. No. See, for him to go through it, the jumping part, that first initial jump was scary. But when he jumped and I caught him, That's all it took. He would climb, Billy. He would literally, I would put him back up on there and I turned around. He says, Daddy, catch! And I have to catch him. Wasn't even facing him. <laughs> Did I catch him? Yes, I caught him. Why? Because he trusted me. He had to suffer a little bit in the beginning to be able to trust. See, when we suffer something and God comes through and picks us up and carries us through to the other side, we look at it going, oh, I can trust him now. To walk worthy, we have to go through some things to be able to trust God more. Whatever it may be, car issues, Finding a car. You know, when we went, to Jordan had a guy come through his, through his line of Chick-fil-A. He says, oh, I'm a, I'm a general manager at a car lot right down the road. How much, what, what kind of price range are you looking at? Jordan told him. He's called a few times, so we went up there yesterday as a family. He says, oh, we just got this car in. 1700 plus tax, it's the yada yada yada. It'll come up to roughly about $2,000. I get in and I start looking, the car looks nice. I reach down the top of the hood of the truck, pull the dipstick out, because this one has a dipstick for the transmission, wipe it and it got a little grit. Uh, first mistake, put it down, wipe my finger off, do the same to me. 
went to Laurel, that was a little green. And I heard the guy say, uh oh. And Jordan, meanwhile, was telling him that I, I went to auto mechanical school and they helped fix up a car for me, yada, yada, yada. Okay? They were getting worried. I took the oil cap off, looked inside the oil, and it was brown. A creamy color. Okay? Hmm. That's not a good sign. That means there's water getting into the oil. Usually that means a blown head. Usually. It can be a blown head gasket too. But usually that's what it means. And I just, I showed them. You would think, okay, they would have taken the car and pulled it off the lot. They left it there. How do I know? Jordan and I later, after we, that was on Friday, we went up there, right? Saturday, Jordan and I went to go to the hunting camp to get our ground line, and it was still sitting there. He said, oh, we just bought it from the um, car lot. And I really don't know how much, how much it is. Let me call my boss. If he's the general manager, as he told Jordan, shouldn't he be the one that's making the prices? I mean, but what am I, what am I getting at? Jordan wants a car. And he has to suffer right now without a car. And we all do because we're not the one car here. Melissa gets up. If, if Jordan's got to be at work at 6.30, we drop him, or at 6, we drop him off for about quarter till, about 20 till. We take me to work, and Melissa comes back home. Then if she has to go to Luana's house, they, they do a little bit of school, and they're off, and then she's got to go pick everybody back up. I, I told Melissa yesterday, I said, I don't know how we're doing this. I don't know how we did by with one car before. She said, by the grace of God. I said, well, that's obvious. But there's some suffering going on. There's not much. It's, a, it's, a, it's an irritation. It's an irritation that I can't take my car to, to work, park it, get in my car, and go home. I'm being dropped off and picked up. But you know something? We can trust Christ through this whole thing. That's what the suffering does. It helps you trust in Christ. And it helps you walk in Christ. Then it says, for bearing one another in love. You know, lifting each other up. Saying, hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, why don't you come to the house and eat dinner with us? Um, hey, Jeff, what you doing today? I thought about you today. Everything okay? How's it going? What's going on? Pray for you. Is there something I can pray about? See, this is where we as Pioneer might be lacking a little bit. That's including your preacher, okay? That's including your preacher. How many of us call each other and find out how we're doing? Not text, but call. Ser seriously. Hey, Jerry, this is Pastor. How are you doing today? I thought about you. Just want to check on you. Forbearing one another in love. Lifting up. Comforting. Holding tight. Showing people forgiveness. This is all in love. See, we, we as pioneer need to do that. 
periodically I'll call my father in law and say, hey, you're just checking up on your sissy, how are you doing? Mom said you weren't feeling good. Periodically. I gotta do that with mom too. I say the same thing. But I know if one of my family is not feeling good, I know that I know that I know my father in law is gonna call to check up on me. Why? Because he loves me. See, we need to do more of that. Lifting each other up, checking up on each other. Billy wasn't here Thursday. You know what the first thing Edith asked me? Did you hear from Billy? I usually do, don't I, Billy? If, you, if, you, if you're not here. No, Billy's sick, he's not here. He's not gonna be here. Or Billy's in too much pain, or whatever it may be. She was what? You see what I'm saying here? We need more of that. Hey, Chuck's not here. We need to call him. Rick's not here. Someone needs to go knock on his door. Cacklers are not here. Desiree gets a hold of Jan and says, hey, is everything okay? You see, you see how this works? That's how you show each other love. Being concerned about other people's needs. Then this word, endeavoring. Keeping the need, or trying to keep the peace. I'm not even gonna get to my first point. <laughs> trying to keep the peace. Keep in, endeavoring, moving forward, keeping everything going. In what? <coughs> in unity or in Christ. You know, I have to say this church is a wonderful unity. We're all unified as one body. We are. We, we all move for the most part as a well oiled machine. We, we, we have the unity for the most part. Is, is there times that the keys or the cards can kind of wank out a little bit, wonky, and we have to set a, stop the machine and tweak it a little bit so the keys fit back into the kind of keys fit right back in where they're supposed to? Yeah. That's with anything. Maybe. Very good. More normal maintenance, right, Rick? <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Normal maintenance. But see, but that's even in our own families. Sometimes the keys, if you got children, don't always match up. <laughs> this week, I've noticed something with my two children. He's been home all week. That's the problem. <laughs> Lord have mercy, please. <laughs> Amen there. Jordan loves to do the same thing that I do to my wife and that Brother Hudson does to his wife. He loves pushing Desiree's buttons. And Desiree, Jordan knows. Desiree, Jordan can say, ah, Desiree, ah. And, and, and it's all over. But it's it's pushing those buttons. But while you're pushing buttons, sometimes there's no unity. It's because he's at home all week. <laughs> that evil voice comes out. And then and then what did Jordan say? He gets on the defensive. Oh, it's all my fault. 
There's no unity sometimes. But they, they love each other. Those of us who took it right out of my mouth. He literally grabbed it and pulled it out. No. <laughs> they love each other. I know this. How do I know this? How do I know that George Mark Spencer and they will not say it? Don't Yesterday. Yesterday, we went to a hospital visit, but we had to drop Jordan off to work. Jordan comes up and he says, love you. And he gives Melissa and I a hug at the same time, or sort of a hug. But you know what he said to his sister? Yes, sis. See you, sis. That's his way of saying, I love you. Okay? But with the unity, sometimes, the keys don't always match up. And I had to go and tell Desiree, listen, he's only getting your goat. He's only pushing your buttons. Don't react and he will stop. What you say, but it's hard. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> See, I can push Melissa's buttons right now, but I know better. Okay? I know better. I do it behind closed doors. <laughs> See, but keeping the unity, or or you can say it this way, staying on the same page. We all should be on the same page. We all should be in Ephesians chapter four. Two forty. It's one, 1,252 in my book. 204. <laughs> but see, we all should be on the same page. Maybe not the same page in our book, but the same area as in Ephesians chapter 4. Yeah. See, that's unity. Being on the same page. But how do we keep on the same page? There's the question, and, I, and I'll be done with this. How do you keep on the same page? Communication. 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 When you start hearing, gentlemen, you don't talk to me. What they're really saying is this. What they're really saying is this. We're not on the same page. What they're saying is, I am over on page 325, and you're over here on page one still. That's the way it usually goes. Why? Women usually read a whole lot faster than men do. They follow most of the part, most of the time, yes. They follow instructions and men go, oh, we don't need the instruction. Two different pages. See, communication. Why do you think I have deacons meeting and trustees meeting? So I know the temperature of the church. Believe it or not. I can figure out the temperature of the church as if I have a deacon and a trustee here. I can. It's just the way it goes. You know if the church is hot or the church is cold. Just by when you start talking to the deacons and the trustees. See, but being on the same page makes the church run or makes us run if we're on the same page with Christ it's going to make us run like a well-oiled machine people are not going to be looking at you and saying oh there goes Chuck again there he goes. he's on one of his tangents about Christ now you know what they're looking at going man he must love some of them well some of them will say that man he must love Christ Man, there goes Chuck on the Facebook talking about all the junk and everything. You know, 
He's always using the Bible about him. He must love Christ. Oh, there goes, there goes Junior. He's he's telling someone about Christ again, and he's talking about a Bible thumper. No, some of them might say that, but a lot of people are going to say, you know, he must love Christ. See, when we're on the same page as Christ is on for our life, people are going to start looking at you the same way that you look at Christ. Think about that for a second. People are going to start looking at you the same way that you look at Christ. How do we know this? Let's take John the Baptist. When John the Baptist was beheaded, what did they say about Christ? It's John the Baptist resurrected. John the Baptist acted so much like Jesus, Herod could not tell them apart. That's the way we should be. That's the way we should be. You know, I, I remember in high school, there was two sets of twins in high school. One set acted just like these two. Did not want anything to do with each other. Did not want to be like each other. The other two, Talina, I remember talking to them. And then we would go to class. I had one in one hour and one in the other hour. One was good in math, the other one was good in science. And the only way you could tell them apart, one had a curl right here in his hair and the other one didn't. No matter what he did, it was a cow, it curled. That's the only way you could tell them apart. But they acted just like each other. They, they talked exactly like each other. Their, their, the, the way that they moved was just like each other. They were twins, of course. The, you know, these two do some things that are just like each other. On the telephone, I couldn't tell them apart if I tried to. But what am I saying? One group, they wanted to be like each other. The other group did not. I wanted to be my own individual person. See, I want to be like this group here. Us that act like Christ, that they could not tell us apart. Man, that's deep. That's real deep. John the Baptist acted so much like Christ, he was walking worthy. We all should desire the Bible. We all should. Let's everyone stand with every other Bible and every close. Let's pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you and I praise you. Father, as we come to our invitation time, Lord, if someone needs to do business with you, I just pray that they get it settled before it's eternally too late. In Jesus' name, amen.